Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Brewer Science with BJ Kayasa, who's going to talk today about material choices in printed temperature sensors. So BJ, when you're choosing materials for printed temperature sensors, what do you have to think about? What kind of considerations are there? Yeah. So when we are talking about the materials for printed temperature sensor, yes, the main thing is the thermal stability, the stability against heat, uh, and also their uh, flexibility and printability because they are in the ink form. So printability is also matters. And also because they contain a lot of different solvents to make it printable. So we need to go through the processing so that we are getting best out, out of those materials. So all these things we need to take into account. Why don't you draw this out for us? Yeah, sure, sure. BJ, what are we looking at here? Yeah, here we are looking at the diagram so, and different components, material components that is involved on making a printed temperature sensor. And so you have to think about not just the materials that you're putting down, but also how they interface with the substrate too, right? So, so this is the substrate. So one thing on the substrate is this needs to survive very high temperature because this is a temperature sensor. So, and there are the other layers like sensing layers which responds to temperature for temperature sensor. And there is a protective layer called encapsulant. And they have to gone through very high temperature processing. And this substrate, also undergoes the same processing when we are processing those different layers. So this substrate has to survive that temperature and substrate is over 95% of the entire sensor. So we can cannot isolate substrate from, from the other components of the sensor. So they come together. And in terms of compatibility, like a thermal expansion, they have to match with each other. And also the sensing layer. So because this is a sensing to temperature, uh, and this needs to have a very nice sensitivity to temperature response to temperature change. Um, and substrate, uh, depending on whether we are printing area or the individual sensor, they should be highly thermally conductive or thermally insulative, depending on. So what can go wrong here? The main thing is, uh, one thing is uh, the processing. So the right processing is very, very critical in getting the reliable sensor. Uh, for example, if we are not processing this uh, sensing layer and the encapsulant at the right temperature and time, basically the sensor will be very, very inaccurate and very unstable over time, especially when you, we are using at the high temperature continuously. And you're also dealing with purity of materials too, right? So the materials sure. that you have have to be completely pure. If they're not, what happens there? Yeah, basically all of these materials, since they have to be in the printable form, they are on the impure form. And they have a lot of solvents and different kind of modifiers to make it printable. And that's why we have to go through different processing to get rid of those additives and different solvent system. So if they are there because we are not completely removing those materials and they still exist on the sensor, and that's what is going to hurt the performance of the sensor. So you're actually refining materials as you're manufacturing these? Exactly, yes, yes. So processing is basically we are refining those materials to get them in the pure form. So whatever we added, so whatever the material contains to make it printable, so we want to get rid of that, those all things so that whatever is left behind after the processing, that is the purest form of that material. If you have impurities there, what sort of problems can it cause? Yeah, for example, let's say substrate. If substrate has a lot of different things that causes outgassing when you are using the temperature at higher temperature, this temperature sensor at higher temperature, then your sensing layer is going to respond to that, that outgas materials. So instead of responding to this temperature, now you have the other materials that the sensing layer is responding to. So that means so you don't have a pure temperature sensor. So there is a lot of other on desired kind of um, uh, responses, you know. So instead of just to temperature. If you have impurities, if they creep into the process, what happens? Yeah, if uh, it's not in pure form, basically there are the other material instead of your pure form materials that your sensor is going to respond. That means uh, you have a drift and unreliable sensor, basically in the short form. Short answer is the not reliable sensor. You want this to be a just pure temperature sensor. Nothing else.
the variation in terms of, of what you're looking for in terms of your temperature may go up and down as a result of that, or will you get a completely wrong reading? Yeah, in the technical form, what happens is, let's say when you are using, so let's say this uh, temperature sensor is not completely processed. When you are using this temperature sensor at high temperature, during that time, now you are processing these materials. Now you are changing your materials from, it's getting pure and pure over time when you are using, now you are getting completely different results. How do you go about measuring the accuracy of the temperature sensor itself and comparing that to the purity of the materials? Is there a way of doing that externally or does that have to be done inside the chip? Basically, uh, we do processing at different temperatures. For example, um, the sensing layer. Uh, so there are different solvents with the different boiling points and we do keep processing at different temperatures and we check the accuracy long-term drift versus different temperatures and that will tell you so where in the material has become in the is in the purest form or whether the processing is complete or not. So this has to be done throughout the manufacturing process the normal way that we we make printed circuits right and it, right. in addition to that you're probably testing along the way as well. Yeah basically we, we use screen printing to fabricate these sensors so we print like hundreds of sensors per sheet actually and in a day you can prepare thousands and thousands of these sensors and for testing also for testing purpose also you do on at least like 100 sensors at a time and so your reliability test versus your different processing conditions or different materials that is based on multiple sensors typically when you have a sensor you've got some sort of communication in there as well too right because you have to get this data out somehow to be able to tell people what's what the temperature is on a particular circuit Yes, yeah. So yeah, yeah, we have the interface. So, so we, we built uh, all the test equipment by ourselves and the communication by ourselves. What kind of metrics are you actually working with here? Yeah, for the temperature sensor, the metrics is accuracy and temperature coefficient of resistance and the long-term drift. Basically, those are the three metrics. You don't necessarily know where these sensors are actually going to end up because they're conformal type of films that you're going to be putting down on a lot of different devices, right? Sure. And sometimes you don't know, is there going to be more vibration? Is there going to be more heat? Is it going to be under extreme stress in one way or another? What happens with these different materials? How do you figure out what works and what doesn't? Yeah, we, we, we uh, when we are doing the quality test on these uh, sensors, actually we do other tests as well on top of the just response to temperature like for example how does these sensors respond to like uh, humidity or uh, some kind of uh, stress those kind of things and uh, they do not have any response to moisture which is a very very big thing so they don't respond to moisture so it's uh, responsive to temperature only and they have extremely small response to stress so they are not like a pressure sensor or stress sensor. They don't respond to that either. Is it different for a temperature sensor than it is for a, diff for a pressure sensor in terms of how you're going to um, think about the, the, the quality of the, the sensor, the purity of it, or is it still the same type of test? No, the test will be different, and the material, uh, materials and the material properties is going to be quite different for different kind of sensors. So what does this actually look like in real life? Have you got an example of this? Yeah, for example, if you see here, so you can see here, there are, there are the temperature sensor arrays, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight printed temperature sensor in array form. And basically, this is the beauty about the printed temperature sensor. Other kind of, of the self sensors, they are the discrete sensors, so you cannot have them in arrays like this. But on the printed, so you can have everything printed at once. Um, and those things are very, very important and very good things about the printed sensors. And you can use for a lot of uh, thermal mapping purposes like lithium ion batteries or any kind of chemical reactions. Would something like this go into a car as well? It can go. It can go depending on what is the temperature of use. So the choice of the materials is of course going to be dependent on what is the applications. So some temperatures might be good just for 100 degrees C maximum, and some can go to 300 degrees C as well. So it depends on the choice of the material. But the nice thing about a printed circuit is that it's very light. It doesn't add to the weight of the yes. car, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Light weight and the being able to uh, be in the array form uh, 
and flexibility um, and manufacturing is very cheap because so it's a very low cost high throughput kind of like you can do the roll to roll printing of millions and millions of sensors very quickly so it's going to be much cheaper is it the ink itself that gets too hot potentially or is it the substrate or both i think it's both it actually it's, it's everything so for, for example for the flexible kind of substrate the best uh, the most uh, thermally stable substrate is polyimide which is stable only up to like 350 degrees c continuous use so after that one so that is also not stable and in terms of the inks so there are not too many inks that is more stable over 300 degrees c so the at high temperature the problem comes from both actually pj chaos and thank you for a great explanation